hey guys hope you are doing well in today's video we are going to see uh, how to configure a NTP server in a Mikrotik uh, device or Mikrotik OS so basically uh, I have received few feedbacks or uh, you know messages from the reader of the blog or videos that uh, they are trying to set up uh, the CSR router as an NTP server and the problem with that is like it consume a lot of resources which uh, results in high CPU utilization in their device because of uh, low resources they are having in their lab and even though they are trying to use the Windows machine as an NTP server so somehow that uh, does not work very well with the call manager as uh, the call manager does not support it so in order to overcome this issue, um, uh, you can install a, a Linux box and configure this as an NTP server. But uh, in today's video, I'm going to configure a very simple, uh, low resource consumable uh, device, which is going to be Mikrotik. And Mikrotik is going to consume less than 160 MB of your RAM and somewhere around 200 MB of your data space on your virtual machine. So basically, uh, this is a license-based product, but uh, you can use it uh, for your labbing purpose. Uh, as I said again, uh, you can only use it for your labbing purpose for your NTP to work. Uh, otherwise, it is not recommended to use uh, uh, it for you know production. But for production, it is always good to have a proper NTP server. Uh, but uh, again, um, um, as I said, like uh, you can. Uh, let's try to use uh, this particular product today and see how we can you know uh, make you create this as an NTP server for your call managers here you need to go to Mikrotik download and here what you need to do is you need to come down and come to the cloud host router and then here you need to download the OVA template so that you can install or import the OVA template in your virtual machine. Now let's select the stable release instead of selecting the testing release and let's select the greatest and latest one. So we'll select 7.1.1 stable because this is the highest uh, or very recent version of your Microtech product. And I'll click on this to download the OVA file. And looks like the download has been completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this particular in my uh, virtual machine. But again, as I said, like this is a license-based product, you need to install license. But for a lab, uh, we can make use of it and then see how it works. And then here, what we are going to do is we are going to rename this to uh, a NTP server, Microtik and then click on import uh, the configuration and, and the installation does not even take more than a minute for Mikrotik product to work as i said like the memory uh, say, uh, ram utilization is 160 mb and the hard drive size is 128 mb just and the processor is one and we have just will just try to install one network adapter we don't need multiple network adapter let's power on this virtual machine so as soon as you power this on this will get installed automatically you don't have to select next or any of the options menu so you see the installation has been completed already now let's try to log in so what you need to do is in, in order to log in you need to key in the credential as admin and it is going to ask you for the password so you don't need to enter any password you just hit enter and the password will be accepted as it is it comes with a blank password so it is asking for uh, do you want to see the software license we'll say no and then it is asking for a new password so let's try to key in the new password so we are done with the password at this moment so now it's a time to configure the interface uh, so that you know we can access the Mikrotik product and then configure the, it for NTP because uh, via the CLI it may be sometimes difficult to you know configure this for a NTP uh, purpose. So let's do one thing. Uh, let's uh, configure the interface for this Mikrotik product. Okay, we'll type IP address then add. 
address and then 192.168.1.10 slash 24 so this is the IP address that we are trying to set this for uh, the macrotic product and then we'll hit enter and it is asking for the interface as view know like we have only one interface I'll just hit a tab so that it selects the interface itself and enter so now we are done with the interface configuration so now we should be able to access this particular product uh, via our uh, LAN network as you know uh, our LAN network is in 192.168.1.x address and this is currently bridged to the LAN so let's try to ping 192.168.1.10 as you can see like we are able to access the or ping the 192.168.1.10 address now let's try to log into the server and see what does it comes up I'll close this window let's try to key in 192.168.1.10 so as you can see here it is currently uh, open up with a page here so I'll key in the credential and the default password uh, username is admin and the password is going to be the password that I have set when during the configuration stage okay so this is the first page what you see here uh, and this is how it looks like on the web page and if you try to click on the web fig it is going to show you some of the information here so you can make use of uh, this particular tool as well as you can also download a uh, winbox so i feel winbox is quite uh, easier and this is a little complicated for me sometimes i feel so if you uh, click on download winbox so the winbox application should be downloaded so in my case it is already there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open winbox for myself and then log in through winbox application so this is uh, how the winbox uh, application looks like so in a case like uh, as you know right uh, I mean I um, I have keyed in uh, the credential here uh, 192.168.1.10 and admin is the use, uh, username and the password I'll just click on connect so if you see here this is the application which uh, gives us access to uh, the uh, microtech product it is similar to the web based one but i feel this application is much more easier to use uh, than the web based application so now in order to configure uh, the ndp server and the client and what we can do is we can go to the system and first set the clock so as you know right and the date today is uh, uh, 16 so this is 16 so let's first try to set the time zone uh, before we go ahead and check the date so it is going to be Asia and then Kolkata okay so we have selected Asia Kolkata so as you see here as soon as I selected Asia Kolkata that date has changed and the time has also changed so but the date today is 16 so we'll, what we'll do is we'll configure this to 16 and then what we are going to do is we are going to configure the time so the time here is 23 then 14 and then let's let it be 00 okay and then i'm going to apply so right this moment if you see we are with the correct time right now click on ok now uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and click on ndp server here and then make it enable and make it many cast and then in this case uh, i'll check this box use local clock and set the stratum to one click on apply click on ok uh, before i click on ok let's see if there are any peers so there are no peers at this moment only 127.127.1.0 that that should be fine okay i'll click on ok now let's come to the system again and select ndp client let's make this enable and then what we are going to do is we are going to apply the configuration so as soon as we apply the configuration uh, we uh, will see like the uh, NDP server will try to connect to this uh, local microtech product and uh, it should set the stratum automatically uh, but before that uh, as I see like uh, the servers for the NTP is 192.168.1.1 which is my default router I'm going to remove this from the list and I'm going to click on close again I'll click on apply 
and here what I can do is I can copy the same address 127.1.0 click on apply and OK let's come to the NDP client again so let's uh, wait for the uh, sync uh, to happen properly so we'll go to the call manager and see uh, what's the current status and we'll try to set this 191.6.1.10 in the call manager so what I'm going to do is uh, at this moment the NDP server is configured as 192.168.1.15 so I'm going to add 192.168.1.10 which is the Microtech product IP address click on save and then I'm going to remove 15 from the list 15 is a another product so at this moment 192.168.1.10 is set as an NDP server so let's try to refresh this page and see if NDP server becomes accessible so the server is not yet accessible I'll try to reset the drift and see if there is any change Uh, let's give it a couple of minutes so that the NDP server can services can come up properly okay so looks like the NDP is synchronized so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, log into the call manager and see uh, what's the current status of the NDP okay so I'll run this command utils NDP status so right now we see here the NDP is still unsynchronized, uh, but we see the IP address is 191.68.1.10 and the stream value is shown as to you and there is some jitter it seems uh, on the server. Let's try to uh, wait for the jitter to com uh, completely resolved. Still it is unsynchronized. Uh, so let's wait for some more time so that the synchronize can happen properly. Let's also try to reset the restart the NDP server service. Let's see if it uh, helps us anyway. Okay, so after restarting the NDP service, so the NDP server uh, has come up and uh, the shrink it is currently synchronized to NDP server with 192.168.1.10 at a stratum value of 3 and so the time is also showing as correct 23.25 which is the correct time and I hope uh, this is uh, going to be very useful in the case uh, where you don't want to you know set up a separate NDP server and uh, you want to set up a server with a very low resources uh, so in such cases i'm sure this is going to be very helpful for you guys i hope you like this video thank you for watching